Hello all, this is James Johnson, a.k.a. Sulphur Blade, and I am here with John Schaefer's At The Gates. And in this particular video, we're going to be going over... We're going to be reviewing the game is what we're going to be doing. Um, and so I want to start off with first that John Schaefer's At The Gates is at least a... It's a 4X game that seems to be going in its own direction, and for that I applaud it. I applaud that it has done new things different than others in this genre. And that's a good thing. Um, we need more game developers trying to do something fresh. With that being said, I have no idea why John Schaefer has put his name on this game. I would be too embarrassed to put my name on this game, as it is one-third of a completed game. And it's been marketed and released as a finished product. I would have... At, at the stage that this game is in, I would be putting it in early access because it's not done. It's not even remotely done. So with that being said, um, let's go over some of the, the positives, the good things. Um, the first good thing that everyone points out is the tooltips. And tooltips are are pretty cool in this game. You can uh, you can certainly learn the game via tooltips without much issue. And just move away, and they'll disappear. Okay, so that's cool. Um, but at the same time, while that's a good thing, I think it's also a bad thing. Because it's the only thing in this game that seems like it's complete. It seems like the tooltips in this game are the primary feature that works. Like, the most time was spent on making tooltips work, and not in the game itself. And so, while the tooltips are amazing, the game isn't. And maybe if they used some of that time they put in making this awesome tooltips, the game could have turned out better. But anyway, so tooltips are a positive, at least in one respect. Next positive is clans. So clans is, is really what's fresh about this game. Um, all of the clans, they come with, they come with their various, uh, oh, I can upgrade this clan. Might as well upgrade them, huh? There. Okay, so, the clans come with their traits. So this particular clan is violent, which means his power is increased by half, which would make him a fairly decent military unit. Hence why I turned him into a spearman. Um, he's a hoarder. He adds three food to the stockpile and adds five treasure to the stockpile. Okay, that's that's a cool trait, right? Um, he's upset with me because I punished him during a, a feud which is another neat aspect of the game is the whole feuding system and having to choose somebody to punish um, so yeah the, those are positives of this game is the clan system the feuding system the trait system are all what kind of makes this game something fresh new and interesting However, with that being said, that's all there really is to this game. That and a very nice 
a very nice knowledge screen. So there's plenty of things to research. However, most of them in an average playthrough are useless. Um, to succeed in an average playthrough, uh, a jack of all trades is not going to succeed. You're not going to have enough clans to do every profession in this game. Um, unlocking all of these things in the knowledge screen is, is pointless to the, the purpose of victory. But there's at least a lot of a lot of ways to play, a lot of things to unlock. Um, but just a little advice to any of you who are actually deciding to get this game, even though I'm going to recommend against this game because it's not finished. Um, if you do get this game, traders, these guys right here, this is the most important profession in the game. In fact. This, this profession right here makes this game stupidly easy. Why is that? Because trading posts give you stupid amount of money. And they're permanent. But you can make them with non-permanent resources. So you know how most permanent structures are made out of stone? This being a trading depot, which is made out of stone. This being a trading post, which is made out of wood. Yeah, it gives half the amount of gold, but... <laughs> when you're making... 357.4 gold per turn... You can't spend it all. Um, and so trading posts are the easiest way to succeed in this game. Um, they're, they're probably the first building you should ever think about building because in the early game they're permanent. Uh, so all that wood that you're chopping, throw down a trading post, it won't go away like so many of the non-permanent structures in early game. In fact, don't build non-permanent structures at all. Avoid it. Put down the trading post, buy your food, Buy your stone blocks and then put permanent structures down. Wasting any resources you have on the map by gathering via gatherers or any non-permanent way of, of gathering those resources is just a dumb idea. It's, it's bad gameplay. Put down the trading posts, collect your gold, buy your food and your stone blocks, and do things permanently from the get-go. That is the best strategy I can advise anyone to play in this game, and it'll make this game stupidly easy. In fact, I've completely won this game in nine hours, my first, very first game playing through, and I could have won it long earlier. Uh, the only reason it took nine hours is because I, you know, didn't really understand the game, and so it took me longer amounts of time to throw my money into getting the five units to send around. But anyway, continuing in on the good things about this game. So we went over tooltips. We went over clans. We went over clan traits. We went over the knowledge screen. And the last good thing I have to say about this game is that there's no annoying music, which I find very refreshing. Um, I, I don't know about you, but uh, I find that most games that put in soundtracks it's just a it's a waste of money and resources I mean uh, what game developer actually you know most game developers have to hire some side of some sort of outside entity in order to put the music into their game and that's just money that they're spending to put something in a game that most of us just turn off at the very beginning of the game anyway and it's a waste of, of resources and time, as far as I'm concerned, in worrying about music. Um, but, you know, while I might feel like I'm in the majority on that, I'm sure that there's a fair number of people that do like music. So, um, if you are one of those people, there is no soundtrack in this game. 
so that could be a bad for you. Now, the bats, and they're pretty bad. Um, diplomacy. Let's, let's just show you diplomacy in this game, shall we? It's this feather icon. Um, here's here's Sertzig of the Saxons. So I'm, if you hover over this, it says you are at war with this player. For now, once you are at war with the player, there's no going back. So I'm at war, and there's no going back. There's no making peace. The funny thing is that I'm at war. I have several times sacked his town. I've pillaged it, and it just keeps coming back because there's no way to actually sack the town. You could pillage it, and you'll get some money from it, but it just come. It's like a cockroach. It just keeps coming back. And then he's got these military units here. You can move your armies on top of the military units, and they don't actually fight. They just stand on top of each other and look at each other. The only thing you can do while you're at war is travel to the enemy's city and pillage it. Um, so to me, this sounds completely broken. I don't think the combat is intended to play like this. In fact, I think you're supposed to be able to, to kill the military units and sack the town because... How else am I going to get to be able to play the other factions in this game? The way that you can play the other factions in this game, like the Saxons, is to either become their ally or to capture their town. But there is no way to capture their town. I've stood on top of that thing and pillaged, pillaged it seven times, and it just keeps coming back like a cockroach. And there's no way to capture it either. So, I don't know what's up with that. I think the game is bugged. And even if it's just a game bug, we just released this game and something as basic as combat is bugged. Not saying very much about the game. Exploration. So, um, obviously, a 4X game uh, has some needed things and one of them is exploration. Let's uh, let's take a look at what I've explored of the map. From what I understand the map is actually really big but uh, I really haven't explored much of it at all. I haven't had a need to explore much of it at all because I haven't had a need to go anywhere um, and I've won the game. Uh, this is actually the load that is literally one turn before I win the game. If I was to finish this turn, I would win the game. And in order to win the game, that's how much of the map I needed to explore. Which is just, you know, nothing. So, in a 4X game, uh, in this 4X game, exploration is completely optional. Which isn't necessarily good 4X game design, as far as I'm concerned. And then that brings me to content. If I can win a 4X style strategy game in nine hours, and that's nine hours because, to be frank, I was learning the game, I could probably win it in three hours in the next game uh, I don't see this game as as, as having a, an even remote amount of content enough to be sold as a completed project this game is lacking severely in content if your first game play through you can win in nine hours Then the cost of the game. The cost of the game is a little bit high. Um, it's, I want to say, $26. Let me go look for sure. At the Gates is a PC strategy game from it's John 10% Schaefer, off right designer now of Civilization at 26 .99.
<laughs> so, um, yeah, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't spend twenty dollars for this game. I don't think it's worth twenty dollars. It, 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 the way the game currently is, being one third of a game, it should be an early access, being sold for about fourteen ninety nine, and that's generous. Um, and then save files. Oh my god. Are we getting the idea here? There is... 38 pages of saves for every single turn, which basically means you're using a whole, a whole bunch of your hard drive space just to play this game that then saves every turn. What? So I deleted 50 plus. Now I'm down to what, six pages? And that's to delete all save games. Alright, well, 50 plus will have to do. Yeah, um, I wanted to like this game. I really did. Uh, 4X's uh, genre needs fresh blood. Um, and this is at least a fresh take on how the game's played, but it's not done. It's not finished. It's It has no diplomacy, which, huge problem. That's one third of a 4X game, as far as I'm concerned, is, is diplomacy. It has no combat. Literally, no combat. Here, let me... Oh, I don't have enough time to... If I end the turn, I'll win the game. But, um... If you look at my previous video, you can see me literally pillaging this town over and over again. Because it wouldn't die. Because the you can't actually fight the clans, and the clans just rebuild it. What's the point of combat where you can't fight? And then also, on top of this, from what I understand, the AI, these other factions, get this. They're not trying to win the game. And there's no multiplayer in this game either. So the only gameplay is player versus environment, is, is a normal PvE style game, and all the other factions in the game are not trying to win, can't win, are not able to win. The only people in the game that can win is you. The only way you can lose this game is to be dumb enough to starve. And from what I understand, there's a few people that do have issues with starving. Um, watching YouTube videos, there are quite a few people that, that put far too much time and effort into... Uh, not setting up permanent structures and they harvest their resources temporarily and they put all their effort into food because well food seems important right but really you should put, be putting all your time and effort into money once you figure out to put time and effort into money in this game well it's stupidly simple after that so anyway, that is John Schaefer's At the Gates in a nutshell. Um, 
I wanted to like it, but ultimately, it is definitely not worth a buy. So, not much else to say about it. Uh, I I wanted to go easier on this game, but I can't because. John Schaefer chose the route of releasing this as a released product. He did not release this in early access when that's what this is. This is an early access product that is that is being sold as a finished product. And that's wrong. Um, it's just wrong on so many levels. So while I wanted to be excited for something new in the 4X genre. This is a very shoddy attempt. Uh, it's It's got a lot of fresh ideas, but at the end of the day, it's been released as a finished product, which is not ethical. It's, it's not a finished product. It should be released as early access. And it's one third of a game. It's missing diplomacy, it's missing combat. Um, all it has is some fresh ideas uh, with clans and, and traits and, and a fairly decent knowledge tree. Uh, exploration completely optional and not much content. Well, with a game that once you figure out it's about making money, well, there's no difficulty in it either. So, at the end of the day, it's not worth the buy. And that is my review of John Schaefer's At the Gates. Have a great day, all.